Hi, everybody. How are you? My name is Ryan Anderson, and I'm the Associate Dean of Business and Entrepreneurship here at Mohawk College. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky today to be joined for another one of our center snackable sessions uh, with Nadia and Melanie, who are going to talk today about, about being their brand. And one of the things that we've had some side conversations about is the fact that, that you know, you, in many cases, as a sole entrepreneur, when you get started, you are the salesperson, you are the marketer, you are the business owner, but you really take on that persona of your business being your brand. So I'm excited to see today, obviously, at, date, at various stages of business, uh, how our two experts are, have become their brand and really represent their company and their brand to their community. So uh, without further ado, Nadia, I'd love uh, for you to introduce yourself to our, to our audience today. Thank you so much, Ryan, for this opportunity. Uh, I am Nadia Ishmael. I am the owner of a holistic boutique here in Hamilton called Stone and Shadow, where we offer holistic products. And we also have a wellness studio working with energy work and sound therapy on site. Thanks, Nadia. Melanie, how about you? Hey, guys. I'm Melanie Wong, and I'm the proud founder of Olive and Splash Bamboo Athletic Luxury Apparel. So we make hoodies and joggers, tees and tights, and face masks and so much more out of bamboo and we uh, manufacture all of our clothes locally here in Canada. I, I'm always in the, in the time we've been doing this, Melanie, you, you do that, that hoodies and tights, yeah, that flows so well. It's almost like you've done that a hundred times, isn't it? The way you go and you say that. So it's, uh, it's cool. I'm going to try and practice that later on because you, you, that just rolls right off your tongue. Um, let's talk a little bit about your brand. Um, you know, what, uh, Melanie, I'll start with you. What, what's the story? Where did it come from? The name? Uh, can you tell us a little more about those origins, if you will? Absolutely. So, um, I mean, for me, I always wanted to own a clothing line and uh, I grew up playing sports. So being in hoodies and joggers and more of an athleisure um, apparel was uh, very common. My closet's filled with them. And uh, I started this company in like 2015, 2016. I had uh, a brand new baby nephew that uh, I wanted some clothes for that were eco-friendly and sustainable because that fit who I was. I, I love, you know, more of a natural approach um, to like life. So whether it's the food I ingest, the clothes that I wear, uh, whether it's shopping local and sustainable. And uh, so I wanted to find something for him that he could wear, but it was more of an adult style clothing, right? Like I didn't want patterns and prints all over it. That's fun. And there's a time and place for that. Uh, but I also wanted um, something you could take your kids out and not be embarrassed in. And so I created this line and uh, they were very, very cool hoodies and joggers and they feature our signature gold zipper on the ankles. And I had so many parents that, um, you know, had asked like, can you make this in my size? And I was like, yeah, I could probably do that. And that's going to look really cool. And now, I mean, I go to work, my uniform is a hoodie and jogger set. Um, and uh, yeah, so I started this company in 2015, 2016, Olive and Splash, that name, it just rhymed well. I knew I wanted to use a uh, natural fa a fabric. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. And Olive was like that natural component and Splash because we were just a kid's line. And in the beginning, Splash was a fun action word. It rhymed, it looked great, it sounded great, moving on. And so uh, <laughs> that's uh, where all of the splash came from, right? It's, so there's no uh, great story to that, but then I chose to use um, bamboo. And the reason I chose to use bamboo is because organic cotton is a bunch of little spurs that like lay, they won't lay flat. You have to pour a lot of chemical on that to make it lay flat. But bamboo in its natural state is one long continuous fiber. So you don't have to add any chemicals to make it lay flat. So in its natural state, it is so ridiculously butter soft. Um, there's so many great components to bamboo. It's hypoallergenic, it's UV protectant, it's moisture wicking, it's thermal regulating, it's antibacterial, it's um, odor resistant, and it's 98.9% .9 antibacterial, which is great. So anything that typically touches your skin, so being your clothes, will seep into your bloodstream. So for me, it's important, I mean, not only for the young kids, but for myself, that I wanted to create a product and I wanted to create a brand that was not only good for the people, but it's also great for the planet. So, you know, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but textiles is one of the largest pollutants of this world. And I think as a designer, we have uh, the responsibility to create something that, you know, if it ends in a landfill that it'll break down into its natural state and that's exactly what bamboo will do so um if i can do something that's great not only for the people but for the planet i'm in love it and i i, I i'm taken back because businesses will spend millions of dollars trying to find the right name 
Um, they'll, they'll go all through product experts and marketing companies. And you just said it was quick and it fit. And so you moved on. So I think that's, yeah. uh, that's great for entrepreneurs to know is that sometimes don't get stuck with an idea, go with it and get moving. So I, I love that. Uh, Nadia, how about you? You know, talk a little bit about, about your brand, about the product, you know, your name, what, what, what went into some of those things? And I really hope you didn't spend millions of dollars on that, or I just contradicted everything you did, but I don't think you did. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. (laughs) Very aligned, very aligned here. So um, I will say, you know, talking about Samani's nephew, it's funny because uh, it was about 20 years ago. It was exactly 20 years ago when my nephew was born. Uh, my brother uh, was very adamant not to have any chemical products, no petroleum jellies, anything like that uh, in the house, anywhere near his new baby. And of course, you know, typically you have the, the regular off the shelf product. So that was the beginning of my um, my research and my investigation into what the heck is he talking about here um, and started to make natural products, natural baby powders and, and soaps and, and cleansers and lotions and things like that for my nephew. Uh, so definitely wasn't a business idea at this point. It was just making sure that uh, taking care of the family was the most important thing. My mom was very scent sensitive, so uh, it kind of carried over. And uh, from there, it, you know, it grew into other families and friends uh, that were having children or being a little bit more concerned about their their skin care. So that was just kind of a little side project that happened many, many years ago, initiated by by family, which was uh, which is an incredible starter. Um and then started moving into later on working with uh, doing research about about energy and and also the products that we we're putting in our bodies as well. So uh, doing a lot of research and training on Ayurvedics and, and looking back to the ancestral teachings that I had from my family and grandmother making coconut oil instead of using, you know, mineral oils and things like that. So um, it was a bit of an evolution, a slow evolution in the beginning, but it really was just a matter of going back to roots, uh, literally natural roots um, for the skin. The, the name of this, the company, Stone and Shadow, uh, started or came about when I really started working with crystals, to be honest, about 12 years ago. And in that time, I had gone through a lot of personal things, uh, a lot of trauma, a lot of um, situations that, uh, that really affected my mental health, my physical health uh, as well. And eventually it came to Stone and Shadow where we were working with stones we as in me and uh, my close friends and and family, working with crystals and stones, coming to the foundation of, you know, solid footing, which was where the stone came from. Shadow was really about that emotional um, journey and understanding that you do need light in order to cast a shadow. So no matter how dark it was, it was just, there's always that light at the end of the tunnel or the light coming in that we can can hold on to. so, you know, working with the crystals and energy work they, uh, from that period of time, again, wasn't really completely a business full fledged from then. It was, it was like, how do I feel better? And how do I allow, let the, the people around me feel better? Um, had some major medical issues about six or seven years ago. And again, pushed me even further into the holistic healing uh, where it came to, you know, mindset, what we're feeding our bodies, what we're feeding our minds, what our environment looks like taking those mental breaks and things like that. Um, And then evolving into my wellness journey and healing journey, connecting with different practitioners that were dealing with things that had nothing to do with medication and chemicals. Um, And and again, it really was a personal personal, um, growth mindset that I had specifically. Once I started realizing how much of a difference it made for myself and the people around me, I realized that more people needed to, to hear about this and understand that there were alternate uh, options other than just, you know, filling your prescription every week, every month um, and, and modifying our bodies in different ways like that. Um, so over time, uh, just, you know, being able to do this on, in a part-time, um, on a part-time level, in my corporate world, I found that people I was connecting with in that same environment were also really, really needing uh, this kind of outlet or this kind of option in their lives. So the growth was was truly organic in that sense, where it was just like, okay, this helped me, this helped the people I loved. Uh, wow, it's helping people that I don't know. It's helping people that I've never had contact with and I don't know about their backgrounds and realized how much we are the same even though we come from different backgrounds and different environments and financial statuses and, and cultures, 
we all deal with so many of the same things and we call it something different or we we just don't call it anything so yeah. that's it, yeah go ahead. I, sorry i just i picked up on something here because it's it's interesting that you know it's not until you have conversations about wellness that you realize that everyone is in the same boat and and it, it's you know the, the oh yeah I, I i feel that or i feel that or me too and all these different things and it's it's interesting how we're almost very proud and protective about some of the things that we may challenge might, might be challenging us until someone's okay to open the door and then they say oh yeah i got that and then uh, away they go um yeah. melanie a quick question for you and then and then nadia i'd love your your opinion as well you know you two have very the, two, the both of you have brands that are very um specific to causes specific to beliefs specific to you know to movements and ways of life which i i, I really admire a ton um but to do that, you have to have a certain level of expertise because A, you're your brand and B, you have to speak to it. And, um, you know, so Melanie, what have you done to make sure that, that you can mirror your knowledge with your product with creating that brand and that community for, for your own business? Um, so I just, uh, like for me, it comes naturally, right? Like a passion and a belief comes from inside. And so to mirror it and it, I'm just functioning I'm just functioning these are these are my beliefs and I think with the more education and understanding and research and you know just to make this place like think of how much we've evolved at each generation of understanding what's good for our mind body and soul um so for me it was easy it's natural uh as a young kid um, I was raised to understand and believe that you know you take care of your planet you take care of your environment and uh so naturally, like for me to build a product and design a product and just even the way we operate, like we don't do receipts and paperless and all of that kind of stuff. Um, not that we don't do receipts, we email, but um, it just, you know, the way that you operate is so different today. And uh, so it, it's just the way that I run my company, um, even from manufacturing, like I oversee and like we have a zero waste policy even just uh our like you know there's always going to be extra trim left over from fabric with cutting patterns and things like that well that's used to make headbands and scrunchies and other things like that and if we didn't have that product well now we do like it's just you know it's you just because there's a need for everything but um yeah zero waste and environmentally friendly um on every aspect is the way that we go and uh, we push hard for it and we try hard for it. And even the team that I uh, have is they're all like-minded, like, you know, going back to passion, you can't, you can't sell anything and you can't succeed or I can't that you can't, but it'd probably be more of a struggle to succeed at something that you're not passionate about. And so for my team, like they eat, breathe and sleep the same kind of environment and beliefs that I do. So it's, the flow is always there no matter which part of the business you touch. And so it's, it's passion that's just thrown into my business. It's just what I do. Yeah. I love that. You know, when you mentioned about your team, uh, I'll, I'll sort of pick on that for a second. You know, when you, when you do get to a point as an entrepreneur, when you're able to hire a team or find, you know, or form a team, having them be like-minded with regards to beliefs, not even just environmental beliefs in your case and, and sustainability beliefs, but really beliefs in, in, in way of work and work-life balance and different things. I mean, if you, can, if you can create that culture and maintain it and hire to it, train to it, promote to it, um, you're, you know, that, that to me might be the most important element of any company you have is creating that expert, those not rules, but expectations. This isn't a rule. This is how we live and this is how we do things. And it's really interesting. It really is. Um, Nadia, you, you, probably had to become an expert in many things that you weren't an expert in before. Um, and your business and, and some of the things that you encompass are changing literally every single day, even though a lot of them are historically very, very, uh, very concrete in where they come from. So, you know, what have you done to educate yourself to you know, remain the expert in your company? Um, but, but Nadia, also, what have you done to really maintain your brand? Oh, great question. Um, you know, really being able to, well, to make, to maintain the brand is really just maintaining me. <laughs> my life experience is my brand, right? The, and, and understanding. So very much again with, with Melanie talking about 
what's happening around us, you know, talking about being being environmentally conscious. You know, we've had a refill program that started before the pandemic. All of a sudden there's lockdown. You can't bring your containers in. We've had to evolve things like that while, while still remaining um, as, as low waste and zero waste and, and no packaging and things like that. All of a sudden packaging, no packaging on our soaps, but we have to ship them. So now we've got packaging to go in the shipping. So but being able to, you know, what initially starting to do with that to being able to, to still um, incorporate practices. So reusing, if I'm getting shipments coming in from my, my suppliers, guess what? It's not fancy packaging you're getting for your shipments from Stone and Shadow. You're getting reused fillers. You're getting reused bubble wrap. You're getting reused paper, all of the things um, to make sure that we're not just throwing that away just to buy something new. So that is, again, coming from a, a Caribbean background uh, where it was very, very much that was part of our world growing up. You reuse the bottles, reuse the, the containers, the um, or infamous for that, that was kept, uh, kept in place here and trying to evolve in a way that was still clean and that was still making sure everybody was safe, including myself, um, that it's it's been a, a bit of a struggle, but at the same time, it's always keeping keeping sharp. We talked about creativity at, at one point, uh, getting getting creative when it comes to things like that, and still staying on brand. So, um, you know, those are the types of things I've had to incorporate. So, looking at different types of um, of ways to interact with our clients that uh, where we did porch pickups when when you couldn't come into the store, still being able to save on shipping and everything out or, or having everything sent out. So I love the idea of the, the window, the drive through window that Melanie has. Uh, we have a porch pickup, so you have to still get out of your car to come, you know, but, but being able to, uh, to still stay true to the fact that we are trying to be accessible. We're trying to cut costs down for everybody. Um, and again, making sure that it's not, there's nothing extravagant in regards to the, to the overhead, uh, not just financially the overhead, but the, the packaging and, and all the extra the stuff. Um, which which aligns with keeping things simple, keeping things mindful in, in practices. Uh, if we want to make sure everybody's being mindful with their own personal day to day life, we want to make sure we're we're living that and uh, and giving people examples of that as well. So, I, I I really appreciate what you're saying about you know about the environmental side, the, 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 the you know the, the the holistic side as well, because they do they go hand in hand, and I think sometimes we we do miss those things, and I. You know the, the biggest takeaway from listening to 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 both of you speak is you've created an environment in a community by by not just selling sweaters or not just selling you know product uh, Nadia in, in in your store but in a whole entire movement and system of beliefs and I think that you know two things on that number one it it does form a community of believers in your product and that's what every good company needs but number two. It lets the people out there believe that you are not only the expert, but you kind of walk the talk. And, and that's something that I think, you know, that that as business owners, we have to do. If, if I walked into Nadia's store and, and she's telling me about, 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 you know, methods of healing and methods of wellness, yet she's not feeling great herself uh, or she's not taking care of herself. Well, that's a problem. If I walked into to, to Melanie's, uh, if I drove through Melanie's, Melanie's drive through window, but yet I saw a bunch of waste in the back. Well, now I walk away with something I can't believe in. And I think that really is where that brand comes in. So I really appreciate that a ton. Um, Integrity is the big word. It, it sure is. And it, it's it's funny. I, I said this to my son the other night. I said, you know, it's not hard to tell the truth. It, it really isn't. And it's yeah. uh, and I think that's something that I, I'm I'm seeing a shift in businesses now in that and that they're, I think they're catching on slowly um, that that they they need to keep that community and walk the talk and make sure that they stay, they kind of, they stay the line, if you will. And that might not, might not help with the profits, but long run, it helps with their um, sustainability as well. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, Nadia, Melanie, thank you so much for the time you've taken today. I know that we're going to join us in some other ones, but uh, you know, I, I think more than anything, you know, not only are you successful business owners, but you really are successful brand ambassadors for your business. And I know that that's, that's really come through in this conversation today. So thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.